Support for I Am Salt Lake comes from KRCL 90.9, amplifying community voices since 1979. This listener-supported music discovery station covers everything from reggae and punk rock to local grassroots activism. Listen today at 90.9 FM or online at krcl.org. This episode of the podcast is also brought to you by our friends at the Salt Lake Barber Company and Libsyn. We're going to be telling you more about them later in this episode. And I want to personally welcome you out today, give you a big group hug, welcome you out today to episode 411 of I Am Salt Lake podcast. My name's Chris Hollifield. And my name's Chrissy Hollifield. So this past Friday was my birthday. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to you. You know, I don't feel older though. That's good though. It means you just have a reason to celebrate and still feel good. Do you ever have to like ask yourself, like count backwards to like how old you are? Oh my gosh, all the time. I feel like every time somebody asks, how old are you, Chris? I'm like, well, let me think for a moment. (laughs) Do some math quick. Hey, if this is your first time listening to this podcast and you're asking yourself, what is I Am Salt Lake podcast about? What am I about to listen to? Well, this podcast is all about showcasing awesome people right here in Salt Lake City. We talk to business owners, comedians, authors, tattoo artists, restaurant owners, distilleries, food truck owners, really anyone that might have a cool story to share. Who's joining us on this episode of the podcast, Chrissy? On this episode of the podcast, we are joined by CJ Starkey, one of the founders of the Salt Lake City Tattoo Convention. We had an awesome conversation with him where we find out what inspired him to help start the SLC Tattoo Convention a book and a deck of tarot cards that he's published, and we even find out what CJ loves about living in Utah. We're going to get into that conversation here in just a minute. Before we get into that conversation, I want to tell you about one of our awesome sponsors. These guys have been with us for a while, the Salt Lake Barber Company. Full disclosure, this is where I go to get my beard trims, my haircuts. Isaac over there, boom, top-notch job over there at the Salt Lake Barber Company. The Salt Lake Barber Company, they are located at 10 East, 800 South, right on the corner of 8th and Main. They offer haircuts, beard trims, straight razor shaves. They do take walk-ins if they're available, but you are guaranteed an appointment if you book it online. Really easy to do. SaltLakeBarberCo.com. Just select the service that you want, the barber that you want to go to, and you got a guaranteed appointment. Again, saltlakebarbercode.com. Go check it out. Go support these guys. Many thanks to the Salt Lake Barber Company for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Let's jump into that conversation that we had with CJ when he came over to our podcast studio and we got to find out his story and the story of the Salt Lake City Tattoo Convention. Thanks so much for listening. Let's get into that conversation. Enjoy. I was like, I'm like, I'm going to catch this guy right at the beginning of the interview about this being banned from <laughs> Twitter, Twitter, man. Cause yeah. so when you signed up for this podcast, we're, we're start, we'll just kind of start right at the beginning. Okay. Um, you notified me that you're not on Twitter anymore. You were banned. Yeah. Talk about that. I mean, how does that happen? Uh, I forgot about Twitter and then, uh, realized I was signed up on a couple of different accounts and realized that someone was using Twitter what, for, the wrong reasons, I thought, and uh, not a big fan of uh, Donald Trump. I'm just going to say it clearly. The elephant in the room. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I got on there and started uh, tweeting, you know, replying to tweets. and uh, Of his. Of his. I got put in time out quite a bit. Um, by Twitter? By Twitter. Do, uh, so are they a fan of his? Uh, they seem to let him get away with whatever the yeah, hell he wants. That's yeah. what's confusing me. He can say a lot of stuff. Yeah. But you got banned. Yeah. And I, you know, I grew up in the East uh, around the intelligence community and things like that and where the Secret Service. And I know that, uh, you know, I shouldn't make any threats, do anything like that that's going to cause a knock on my door. So uh, I would say a couple different things and get time, you know, put in time out and got shut down and got shut down increasingly more. And basically the thing that I, I found that uh, had the, most repercussions was just telling him that his brother drank himself to death rather than, you know, live on earth with him. And they, uh, they just kind of shut me down. And then I realized actually for a while that, uh, the account was linked to the tattoo convention page <laughs> the oh, no, one that no. I was going through. So it was fortunately, I guess, an inactive period where people weren't really looking at the, the convention page too often, but, uh, yeah, that shit was posting right up on there. And then I created some other accounts, realized, some different emails that had access to it. And eventually I just got the kibosh. So right now it's kind of weird when uh, you see some news stories and they tend to show the 
Twitter yeah. version of the news oh, story, yeah. and I can't click on them. <laughs> so oh, like, no. Okay, I guess I'll go to a different news source. It, like, it you're even blacklisted. Like, you can't even look? I can't look at it at all. Oh, my gosh. Wow. What is it? Just like a black page comes up? Just uh, one of the last I'm just curious. Ones. This is so fascinating. Yeah, I hate to no, tell you this, but you're definitely on some kind of list. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure That's I'm on a, quite a few lists, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do you do, right? Yeah. yeah. Twitter like, Twitter's kind of dead anyway, man. I'm not the best at the uh, social media stuff. Uh, I definitely have to have to stay up on it. You know, at a point there, it looked like it would be something that was viable and w- worked with the website web, uh, website designer. And he made it uh, a link on the page to kind of keep the page or the uh, you know the homepage of the website a little more active and a good way to post on the fly. You know, before, like prior to WordPress, I could be like, okay, so and so you know is coming into town on this, and there it goes right on the you know sure. on the homepage, so I didn't have to go in and change the website daily. So I thought that would be a good look. And then I uh, kind of forgot about it until just got reminded recently, a couple of years ago that uh, Donnie Dickhands was all over the place. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so where, where do, where's home for you, man? Cause you're not from Salt Lake city, right? No. Uh, I was born in Pittsburgh, grew up in Virginia beach and then lived in Richmond, Virginia for a while. Moved out here about 21 years ago right now. 21 week. years ago. Mm-hmm. Why Salt Lake city, especially 21 years ago, it was kind of, it was a different place, man, 20 years Not ago. Not quite it, as progressive. It was. It was pretty cool. I, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, my good friend and business partner, Nate Drew, and his wife were coming out here to start up a tattoo shop. Uh, they ended up starting up uh, Lost Art Tattoo. Uh-huh. And uh, I just kind of was spinning my wheels and real idle back in Richmond. So I kind of threw caution to the wind and jumped in the car with them and came out and gave it a shot. It's interesting. That's kind of like, uh, what, what were you like early twenties probably about then? Or I was in my late twenties. I was 27. At that 20 years ago, you were in your late twenties. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You do not look like you're that old, buddy. Thank you. No, well, you no, you know, I, know I, <laughs> I turned 42 in a week and, and I think I look pretty good. You guys you, both you, you age even, very well. You look better. Very graceful. Cause so I took off about 20, gosh, it's been longer than 20 years. See, I, I went to Pennsylvania to mm-hmm. get out of Utah cause I couldn't handle it. You know, I was like, I got to get out of this place. So we kind of went opposite directions right so you don't tattoo and we kind of talked about this before uh we started recording so you you know you do this tattoo convention Mm -hmm. you don't even tattoo no uh so it wasn't like you were coming out here to tattoo even though your buddy nate or your your business partner nate Mm -hmm. was coming out here to tattoo did you have any work or any kind of thing lined up when Uh, you came out here no i had no work lined up when i came out here i had to just get right into a kitchen and start cooking as soon as i could to make some money i came out here like eight days notice with nothing like no savings, nothing. So, um, yeah, I had, I had, uh, worked at the tattoo shop that Nate worked at. We built one under my, uh, warehouse apartment in Richmond. I was like a front guy for a while there. And I'd hung out around tattoo shops, been to a couple tattoo conventions prior to this, the guy that Nate worked for and I worked for, he ran the Richmond tattoo convention for several years. And the guy that had it before him, I hung around his shop when I was in college I started working DJing and uh, bartending and working the door. Mainly, I started DJing when I was like 19 with a fake ID. Nice. And there's a tattoo studio right down the street from us, like 1989, Crazy Ace Daniels. So I hung out with him a lot and went to the Pittsburgh convention with him. And that was quite a story. So you were seeing these tattoo conventions and then, yeah. and then is that kind of by traveling and visiting them. I mean, you mentioned Pittsburgh and Richmond. I'm sure you went to others even besides those two. Is that kind of how the idea came to do one here in Salt Lake then? I didn't travel and go to very many. Nate did at that time. You know, this is going to be our 17th year. So when the idea came across, it was uh, 2003. I remember the first year, man. Awesome. I remember it. It was a crazy show. Yeah. I just, uh, I worked at Cafe Melisse and, uh, we had a lot of customers that were from the Salt Palace and uh, waited on them at lunches. And I used to DJ at Burt's Tiki Lounge on Monday nights. And me and uh, John Pratt were hanging out after yeah. hours. We weren't drinking after hours at Burt's at all. Oh, hell well, it's gone now. Yeah, we were drinking after hours <laughs> and uh, <laughs> watching the sunrise and uh, <laughs> just started talking about how Salt Lake's you know scene was just incredible and thought we yeah. needed a tattoo convention here. So. There was nothing. There, there was I mean, nothing prior to that. No, no, no. Which, which is incredible considering our tattoo scene here is incredible. It, it is. Back then it was huge and now it's just like everything. It's just gone crazy. So was that the first convention that you helped put on or were you part yeah. of others? Yeah, yeah. 
The very first one at the Salt Palace. Mm-hmm. You went big. Yeah, you, we you did. Didn't, you didn't just like do uh, rent out the culture hall at a church or no. something, no. right? I don't know. I, I mean, would I'm go trying to that tattoo I'm convention. Tra- though. Could that you imagine be that, like an, an inside, like a like a Mormon church or something? Like. Uh, yeah, I've got a good imagination. I can't imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the steak center. We can all hot tub afterwards and you know wash so, away those tattoos. So, who's initial? idea let's 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 i kind of want to start a little bit with this like the initial idea was it your idea nate's idea you said john pratt it was pretty much john and i going back and forth and nate nate uh traveled the world going to tattoo conventions so i kind of did my uh didn't have a computer didn't have an email address i think i had a cricket phone at the time yeah this was back way before yeah 2003 Mm -hmm. we uh we started the company and I took a meeting with the people at the Salt Palace and they were, you know, like, maybe you should go to uh, Southtown Expo Center was new at the time. And they were like, we don't really do public shows here. They weren't doing fan cons or any of that stuff back then. It was just pretty trade show based. Mm-hmm. So they were, you know, like, we, we think, you know, it's cheaper. You got free parking and you should probably take this down there. And I was sitting in their offices and I was like, no, the reason we want to do this here is right out the door. You got dead goat. And Murphy's and all these different bars. And I figured I could talk to the uh, local bar owners, see if I could maybe get an advertisement with them in the program that we were on. Or I only hadn't even thought about doing the program at that time. But I was like, well, maybe I can get temporary memberships to put in people's registration packet when they get here. That oh, was that was still in the membership. Yeah, days. yeah that oh, yeah, was and back in yeah, private yeah. for members. Cow. And uh, yeah. I don't know if you're all here for the Olympics, but the Olympics kind yeah. of fizzled after the 9-11, yeah. you know, and, and uh, corporations pulled out and they're just giving away tickets. And, you know, we thought it was a good time for the world to be exposed to Salt Lake. And I think it kind of missed it a little bit. So our first year, we focused really heavily on uh, – international artists getting some over and showing them and domestic artists and showing them that we get down in, in Salt Lake city. You know, I had moved here in 97. This is 2003, 2004 is the first show. And I learned the ins and outs of, you know, skirting the membership thing or. Yeah. What did, I mean, what, what were people saying? Do you remember? I mean, granted my memory is horrible too. So I don't expect it to be top notch for you, yeah. CJ, but I mean, were people, was it tough to get 17 years ago, 2003, you said it was the first show. Mm-hmm. Was that tough to get people here, artists here? It it really it wasn't too tough. I mean, we were we were we started out in their smallest hall, and we packed it. Uh, how many it, people? How many people? Like artists and in, in oh, I think we people. had forty two booths. Okay, I think somewhere around that we were in hall three, and it was it was crazy. They uh, they did a lot of pre press. I didn't know how to write a press release or anything like that. Remember the Tribune coming down and uh, taking pictures of Nate and Keith Darms and some of the guys at our shop, and they did a little interview in front of our sto- our shop on State Street, and uh, you know talked to them. And after the guy was done with the little wrap up, I was like, "So where do you think this is going to land?" And he's like, "Oh, you know, on the first first page, unless something nine eleven type thing happens." And I was like, "Oh, rad! You know, the arts and entertainment section." He's like, "No, the newspaper." I'm like, whoa! And we, wow. I, I had this brilliant idea before uh, throwing my our first tattoo convention of uh, talking to the people at Wendover. They had a, uh, I used to like to go to Wendover a lot. still do. Um, they had offices downtown at the Sheraton and I went in and met with them and I was like, Hey, I'm going to be hosting all these people. And uh, we kind of like to bring them out and gamble with you. You know, what, what can we do? And they were like, Hmm, we can arrange for three buses to bring you out there. And I, uh, at the time I was working at Brewies as well. And, knew the guys from Moab Brewing. And so I arranged for cases of beer on all three of these buses. And they gave me 25 rooms at Montego Bay, 25 at Rainbow and 25 at Peppermill. So great idea for a guy that doesn't have a spreadsheet and doesn't have everyone's phone number, put everyone on a bus and take them out the window. So, <laughs> so is that for like lodging for the artists who came yep. in? They actually, wow. Yeah. That is so brilliant. People who never met them somehow were meeting and doing the setup at the convention center on Thursday. And they're like, Hey, you want to go to window with us? Uh, come back at seven. I'm like, you know, they're like, what, what's a window over? <laughs> what's a window? Over? That's yeah. the real salt lake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's where the drinks are free and there's free drinks on the beer on the bus. Just come on. Somehow we'll figure out how to get you back. <laughs> so yeah, we did that. We go out there and we make party and uh, get up and stumble over the newspaper in the morning. At that time they were delivering the Tribune out there and right on the cover is Nate doing this back piece and just the, it's the whole front page story. So sure enough, we get on the buses, I get in the car we sent one bus back and we used like 40 of the rooms or whatever and point a couple friends. I'm like, I don't know, stay up, figure out where everyone is, talk to the front desk. If no one's awake, just 
check them off. I don't know. We got to get back there. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So they hit snow on the drive back. Everyone thinks it's going to be a buster. Some people had never seen snow before. What time of the year was the first tattoo? It was February. February. Yeah. 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 President's Day weekend. Yeah. We hit all this snow. People were freaking out, thinking it's going to be a buster. We get back to the convention. Center. Great idea to get back to the, you know. Go party in Wendover the night before you're going to do your first convention. <laughs> Everybody's there. real alert, real alive, yeah. feeling great. Yeah. 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 The best time to get a tattoo, man, with a hangover. <laughs> Definitely. Make sure all your artists are well hung over. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we, we hit the snow and see that paper and we think it's going to be great. We get there and there's already people lined up at the front door. At the Salt Palace. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We, you're, uh, like, you're like, people are coming. Let's do this. Yeah. Were you just like, terrified at that moment? Like. Yeah. Holy shit, this is happening. Yeah, I thought I was not only going to MC it, I was also had my turntables and my records up there. I thought I'd provide all the music, DJ it, run the contest, and do a first convention, like no iPod to put music on. So uh, they were there, and they were lined up, and they were ready to go. And we had like one color Kinko's laminates. So we were actually laminating as we were going. We ran out of lanyards. Uh, we had to go, someone went to like a hardware store and got... Um, clothesline and so they were cutting them to order so you would see like when i review the pictures you see some people and their laminates like down to their knees and then some <laughs> it's up at their neck and we're like amazing. just take it to like arm's length and cut it i mean not a bad problem to have but it was but you were it getting nuts. it done we, you were we doing it, it. yeah we and it. you said Good improvisation well, and now yeah. nate had no experience either right uh well no he worked for uh billy eason that had the show in richmond nate okay so quite he, a bit for him. so he did know some and he yeah he's nate, been to a lot of conventions and yeah he knew the the inner workings but like not to downplay the richmond show but it, it's in a hotel um lobby and they do they do well but nothing like the numbers we were doing but we were kind of kind of the first people to go ahead and move it into a convention center. There's a lot of uh Were you facing a lot of obstacles though, like in Utah, right? Especially twenty years or seventeen years ago, right? Like I don't the know. The mentality of it's was just a it's just a different you know. I mean, we even kind of made a mention of you know a few minutes ago in the recording how much Utah has changed, how much Salt Lake mm -hmm. has changed. And sure. I didn't know if there was a lot, you know, I guess like were there protesters outside? No, I mean, I guess you no. really weren't <laughs> dealing with that kind of stuff with tattoos. It wasn't like you had to deal with alcohol. It wasn't like you had to really deal with with any of the things that are are you know common things here in, in Utah when you get out of staters. Yeah. I I just think the time was right. I think uh I grew up in the Bible Belt and and uh anywhere that there's strong religious uh presence or uh for lack of a better word, we'll just stick with presence, but uh there just seems to always be a um a strong a backlash. Yeah. yeah. Counterculture always counter gets big. So I think the, you know, time was right. I think the world's attention was on us. It was, it was pretty amazing. Um, before like, a, I think the day that we were doing the setup or possibly the day before Doug Fabrizio yeah. did a show on it. Uh, he had Nate on, he had Chuck Eldridge, he had Ed Hardy on there. Nate had brought in a friend from Switzerland. They got on there on, you know, on uh, Radio West. Which, the Ed Hardy? Yeah. yeah really? Yeah. yeah, they called remote and Doug Fabrizio. Oh, I was going to say. You know, like he, he does his, you know, he does his background. And that, that show was amazing. I think there's a link to it still on our, yeah. on our website. But, so uh, how many people do you think came out that first year? Man, I would say probably Just a guess. five, six thousand people. Really? Yeah. Wow. For the first year. Did you yeah. have enough room? They were crammed in there. It wow. was crazy. Yeah. Like looking at the pictures, like the contest of the con tattoo contest at the time, you know, it was the first one. So people were really into it. And I'm looking at those pictures uh, recently and they're just, all the aisles are full and we did pretty wide aisles and they're just like, it was just crazy. I mean, Jam like there, there had to be 500 people watching the contest. So by the end, were you completely motivated, completely exhausted, completely defeated? Like what was your initial reaction of oh, fulfilling the first I was on, I was on cloud cloud 11 for like a month afterwards it was like operating on no sleep whatsoever we took everyone out and we partied and yeah it was it was exhausting but you were a lot oh, younger too. yeah yeah for sure, for sure but you weren't in the you weren't in the red right like i mean you 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 made a profit you you yeah. you you survived and now you're here 17 years yeah, later we do it again now are there more you said about Five to six thousand people the first year. I mean, is it growing a lot, or is it kind of just stayed about there through the last? Uh, it, it stayed seventeen the, years. The or next so? year, I think we had a little drop off, but I blame that on the Suicide Girls. I got a computer. Which is, what? What? What is that? <laughs> suicide Girls. Oh, well, the, the website. The website? Suicide yeah, Girls. Yeah. I finally, Everyone wanted to stay home and look at that. No, I, oh. I finally got a computer, and so I was like, "Oh, we'll get some Suicide Girls to be a models <laughs> and 
spent a little bit on bringing them out. And, you know, like, I guess that's before hashtags and influencers, but, uh, there were sweethearts and there were some local that were on it, but I spent a little bit too much time on my laptop talking to suicide girls and not enough promoting. <laughs> ah. I gotcha. But I mean, it was definitely not a buster. No one was bummed on it and everyone gets, you know, stayed busy. But you mentioned, and, and I don't know if we mentioned this on the recording, you don't tattoo. I don't. Do you feel like you should? tattoo at all like that you're putting on this tattoo convention i mean are, are you artistic at all um uh, that's yeah that's a question i get asked a lot um i feel like we need to yeah right? i don't think uh you know for four months out of the year i wouldn't be able to tattoo because i have to kind of sit behind the computer work on the website update the website do the links do the spreadsheets answer the emails now you gotta it's, it's amazing how many people i just spent a minute on um Instagram before I came over and how many people are hitting me up through there when it's basically an invitational show and are trying to get a booth and don't even take the time to go to the website anymore and yeah. reach out on the contact form. People don't do websites anymore. Yeah. I, I've heard, I've heard that discussion on here a bit. Yeah. Um, I, do. <laughs> I think it's good to have, yeah. no, you're not like, no one will take you seriously yeah. if you don't have a website, Yeah, but we don't go out of our way to look. For yeah. Them anymore. It's, it's sad. It's yeah. sad. It is. Yeah. The, um, when but we I, first had a website design in our first advertising, we like advertised and juxtapose, you know, and like spent a grip on that and in the magazine strange choice. But we were kind of, mm -hmm. we were kind of, uh, back when we were doing the convention, a lot of the tattoo magazines were the only way to kind of, there was no internet to, to critique or to see other people's work. So you kind of sought those out to study other people. And that's how people kind of got their notoriety is by being published in the magazines, but they were, for the most part run by bikers. So we were kind of against those, um, uh, how they kind of made money off your show and it was after the fact. So we kind of shunned the tattoo industry in our advertising and focused, you know, we, we partnered up with like uh city weekly and did billboards and just did some street team advertising. Or you brought the tattoo industry into the mainstream. Yeah. Cause I don't think that was quite as mainstream, you know, it was very limited right before that. Yeah. Yeah. When we, yeah, the uh, TV shows started kind of getting their footing right around then. I think it was our third year that the uh, Hart and Huntington people came out and they were going to record for the show and they ended up not really being able to use any of the footage because of my refusal to turn down the music and they couldn't clear anything with licensing. So they, it was, it was awesome. They're, uh, why one, did, why one didn't their, you want to turn down the music? Just fuck, fuck be, be, okay, being a <laughs> little experience, okay. man. Okay, okay. yeah, because like, like <laughs> they want to make their TV show, but all these people that came in to the convention are there to get tattooed, and they paid their money. So yeah, it, it was a quite a debacle. It, it came down to like the midnight hour of like signing the releases and giving them kind of carte blanche, and then you know the production assistants and one of their cameras caught on fire and. They just kept kind of trying to dictate how we were doing our show because they can't do anything that has unlicensed music in the background. Tough shit. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Libsyn. You know, I know we have a lot of listeners listening right now and you are thinking of starting your very own podcast. How do I know? It's because you're emailing me. You're asking, Chris, how do I start a podcast? Give me some tips. Give me some tricks. Well, if you or someone you know, if you're in the process of starting a podcast and you are looking for truly the best podcast audio host out there, go check out Libsyn.com. We've been using Libsyn to host I Am Salt Lake podcast for over seven years now, and I know that I truly could not be more happy with their service. They make it super easy to set up. And they make it super easy to get your podcast routed to all the podcast players out there like Spotify, Pandora, Apple Podcasts. I am Salt Lake Podcast listeners. Listen up. We created a promo code just for you to use Salt Lake. If you use this promo code at checkout at Libsyn.com, you'll get the rest of this month and all of next month, a free podcast audio hosting at Libsyn.com. That's spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N, Libsyn.com. Use that promo code Salt Lake, all one word, and you'll get the rest of this month and all of next month, a free podcast audio hosting. Go check it out. I think you'll like it. And you're going to send me an email and say, Chris, thanks for the tip. Thanks for the suggestion. And many thanks to Libsyn for their support of this podcast. So 17 years later, when's the next? It's coming up here, right? Yeah. February. 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 What are the dates of it? Let's, let's 21st through pimp 23rd. it out a little bit here. Go. Yeah. February 21st through 23rd at the Salt Palace on uh, Hall 5, which is right across from the Delta Center. How many, how many artists, you said 43 the first year, right? Yeah. Like how many artists come out now? 
Oh, about four or 500. Wow. It's, I mean, about 400. It's, it's getting big. It, uh, yeah. Now explain this. Okay. So for people listening, cause I've, I've got, I got a tattoo at a convention one time years awesome. ago and it was, it was in Pennsylvania actually. And I don't even know. I don't even remember the entire process. I remember just looking through some books and, and I didn't have anybody in picked out or something. I can't remember, but it's a little different at conventions. Isn't it helpful? Like to find an artist prior, like that, you know, is going, or basically, I guess the point of what I'm trying to make is to help listeners with the process a little bit. Like, like what's say, the, the best way to go to a convention yeah, and get a yeah, tattoo? Yeah. Say, say they want to get an art or some work done at the Salt Lake Tattoo Convention. Right. What's the best way to go about it? Uh, there's several ways. Like a lot of people uh, with the internet and everything, it's kind of been a curse and it's kind of been a good thing. So for the most part, it's a great opportunity for people to get tattooed by someone that they wanted to get tattooed by that they don't have to jump on a plane and get a hotel room and go to wherever, wherever they're tattooing. So through internet, through, um, uh, you know, our website, everyone is linked. If they have a shop website, that's hyperlinked in their name. And then their name for the most part goes to Instagram. So you can obviously message through there. So a lot of people now everyone's got, you know, a smartphone or a desktop or a laptop, and they're able to go back with ideas, Dropbox, you know, reference, come up with stuff. And a lot of people have appointments set before they're here. Some people take start something and take deposits for the following year. But some people have uh, started to not want to be booked out the whole weekend and will say, take Saturday to take walk-ups. So they'll have a book or they'll have several flash designs, line drawings that they're offering for a set price. Some people brainstorm and uh, get online and get their reference. A lot of, uh, definitely a lot has changed with yeah. The smartphone in your pocket. Well, and it's, I mean, it's different just even with shops. I mean, we've talked to artists. I mean, you've listened to the show, CJ. I mean, it is such a different world with tattooing. And the beautiful thing about uh, these conventions is it's almost like having, you know, what'd you say? 400. I mean, that's like having 400 shops yeah. in one area. Plus a, some of these people are like from Germany and yeah. I mean, yeah, you yeah. got all, all the, yeah. uh, pretty much every country, right? Yeah. We try. Yeah. yeah. It changes I mean, up a little bit every year. Any mentionable ones that you want to mention for the next one, or is it still too far out? Unfortunately, some people don't want to be mentioned okay, okay. online because yeah. it's kind of hard to get into the States sometimes if you're oh, going to be working. Interesting. Yeah, we've yeah. had people, a friend of ours from Paris was caught at JFK, put in handcuffs and sent back to Paris because she was on MySpace and on these different oh. pages. And they're like, no, nah, you're coming here to like work. Like you can travel here to enjoy but yeah. if you come here and go to a conference ah, and work you can get oh, okay they want, I did, I they didn't want really, their tithing is that for music for bands too i wonder if that's why yeah, bands yeah, have a hard bands, time they, getting they, across they're borders come in and, with a work visa and they have to pay what advice would you give somebody and this is a question we ask here a lot too cj is is people like let's say i wanted to do a convention right mm-hmm. like obviously not a tattoo convention i'm not going to step on your toes here but what advice would you give me, man? I mean, that's a, that's a big undertaking. That's a lot of stress. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of time. Yeah. It's a gamble. One or two pieces of advice. Is there, do you have any? Do your homework. Yeah. Figure out, you know, break even what it's going to take to get people in, you know, like is what you're putting in that market. Is it the right market for it? I think it was, I think this is definitely was the right place. Um, and, and the right time. And when we started, there was, you know, maybe one, not as much in the winter months, but one convention a month across the USA. Nate moved out here to start another shop and he moved from Virginia to here. He didn't open another shop one block down from where the shop he was, he learned at. And the old school ethic of that, um, we tried to not be over top of anyone or near anyone in California. At the time, Nevada didn't have a show. Wyoming didn't have a show. Idaho didn't have a show. In fact, someone tried to throw a show in Park City a few years, um, quite a few years back here because they couldn't get into our show and uh, have some decency, have some respect. Don't do something that someone else is doing unless you think you can do it. And then also don't get greedy. If the first one works, don't do it twice a year. Have you thought about doing it twice a year? No. You just think that would be too much overwhelming? Yeah. Yeah. I think it would take away some of the, uh, the beauty of what it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If you over, if you ever overdo it, then not, not as many people are even interested anymore. It's like, oh, it's always happening. So why are we going? There's a lot of really cool layers to what we do, but, um, to see these, like now that it's 17, like last year it was, you know, kind of a sweet 16 theme. And to think that, you know, now a kid can drive that was born, you know, or conceived that weekend. It's just, it's amazing to see these families that have 
multiple generations and they come back every year and to see these people that have no intention of getting tattooed, maybe they're coming to see people in February with their shirts off, but you know, there's beer trucks there. We have no, like people think we got to cut out the concessions. We get nothing like that or anything like that, but it's a real sense of community. And yeah. I think a place where people can let their freak fight, ah, freak flag fly. Whoa. Let's try and say that again. <laughs> it's a tongue twister for sure. <laughs> but yeah, you know, everyone can get in there and feel, uh, like a bunch of outsiders together. Is is the local uh, Salt Lake City tattoo community pretty supportive of the convention? Yeah, very supportive. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine. Yeah. I would imagine they would be, right? Because mm-hmm. they, they want to be part of it, right? Yeah, there's some idiots that don't, you know, sure. don't get their foot in and sure. don't understand that they should come down there and, you know, learn. And a lot of people yeah. are learning the tattoo by YouTube now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it is pretty, it's, it's interesting, you know, and we've talked about that here on the show even is uh, just all the shops <laughs> popping up, you know? Yeah. Let, I want to talk about this book. You wrote a book, Bored to Lose. Yeah. So I, I found this podcast uh-huh. that you were on because I was like, I got to learn a little bit about CJ here, right? I mean, I know right. you do this tattoo convention. Uh huh. What's this book, man? What's, what's Oh, it was, uh, I was, I was new to the computers and not too good at the Google. I figured a lot of tattooing and skateboarding have kind of always gone hand in yeah. hand uh, in my life. And uh, I figured I would do a book where I bought a hundred blank skateboards and sent them to tattooers that skateboarded and just sent them a blank board. It was numbered one through a hundred and set them loose. And then what came back, I decided I'd try and make a coffee table book kind of at the end of coffee tables and, uh, or not (laughs) people. We still, we still have coffee tables, but coffee table (laughs) books. Um, did you get all hundred of them? Did you get all hundred back? 93 back, I think. And some submissions for boards I didn't send out. A lot of different, really interesting treatments. Uh, some were dremeled all the way out. One was wrapped in leather by Michael Bergfalk, who now lives here. I think at the time he lived in Arizona. And I kind of ran that through my space. I just kind of reached out to tattooers and got their info. And obviously the people I knew from doing the convention and people here locally, but uh, some people I'd never met and made some mistakes, kind of rushing to get it done, to take it out on the road. Um, and Jeff- how, how long ago was, did you do this? 2008, 2000. Okay. So you were already doing the convention here and everything. You just decided, I mean, this was self-published or did you have a, okay. So self-published is the book still available? Yeah. They're just sitting in the basement and gathering dust. Um, the money, I think maybe one will sell a year. So people, I I think the website's down now online. They could buy it. it kind of stole the thunder from me for a while. He's like, why are we talking like, about this? Seems like the distribution <laughs> method is not quite there. Like, yeah, I don't. Cause like, I want a dollar one. per. Yeah, I know a dollar per book would recoup some of the money at this point, but it just, it really hurt that it just went nowhere. It cost a shit ton to, to ship the boards back to everyone to send oh, the I books. Bet. And, and, uh, I took them to some different, different cities and had art shows with them. It did well in San Francisco. It actually got, my friend was uh, working out there and she, a new uh, gallery opened up and she did a press release and uh, Nate's board in particular got the center, center page of the San Francisco Chronicle, the 90 hours, the weekend thing. So this new uh, gallery opened up, it was its first show and had a line around the block and it happened to be uh, like the end of the season. So all the trimmers and all that had, had their pot, pot money and they, Bought a few of the skateboards for a nice inflated gallery price. We had displayed it at the convention for years. We would do like an art show to kind of fill up the hall with some stuff for people to, that aren't getting tattooed to give them something to do. I'd like to get my hands on a, on one of those books. I know, I, too. I know your address now, so you know you know the address. You know, well, what about we'll the, for you at the show at Will so, Call? So what about what about these tarot cards too, man? Because I got to find out about these. Yeah, I too. also need a set of those. Yeah, they're they're awesome. I'm about ready to go into a second edition of those. We have a local shop here that's been in the news a lot lately. Um, they couldn't get into the show. Uh, we didn't want them in the show a while back. Um, and uh, this guy went on a campaign where he was uh, calling everyone gypsies, emailing everyone all this like hateful shit, like people I didn't even that didn't do our show that right I here in Salt Lake. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, so the guy that used to do my web design and my graphics, he uh, was like, oh, "This guy keeps calling you gypsies, and why don't you just curate another?" tarot card show you know and then like mail it to him that would be amazing (laughs) so i i like when i got 39 people committing to doing the tarot i started a spreadsheet shuffled uh the deck i had no background in tarot and just assigned which card people would get and gave them a a size dimension so that we could you know have a uniform size so we could reduce it and make a physical card and that was that was quite an experience but that's done well 
And people can still get these cards, right? Yeah, yeah. Tarot of the Tattoo Age dot com. I think there's about 30, 40 left. So I'm going to be after this show probably working on doing them again. I printed here locally Twila transcript. Um, oh, they print like playing cards and stuff. They're they're like a yeah, or just like a cards. printer or tarot cards. Yeah, say. they're on a real thick stock of paper. They got a UV yeah, coating, yeah, die yeah. cut, box. They're they're, they're so, pro. So check them out. I'll put that link at. Uh, I am saltlake.com uh, with this episode as well. So people can go check it out and, and buy them right there on the website. It seems like you're quite an entrepreneur. Is that always, I mean, growing up, have you always been, I mean, what, what, yeah. what were you doing as a kid, man? Like what were you doing? Strange little side jobs, creating own companies. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I dove in dumpsters and sold yes. people, uh, I slung cinnamon sticks, you know, Lucy's of bubble gum joints, whatever I could. <laughs> um, I yeah. love it. I started hanging out at a reggae record store and uh, hung flyers for them. I worked at a surf shop and I worked at a record store. I worked a lot before I went to college and uh, I DJed and uh, did a little bit of promoting, booking bands and making those gambles with other people's money. So I've kind of always, I don't know, thought I had my finger on the pulse, figured out what's hot and what's new. Are you still DJing? Not as not as much as I'd like to be. No, like just at like clubs here in Salt Lake. Yeah, maybe? not or... nothing right now. Um, I do some one offs here and there. I was going up to the Yes Hell in Ogden, playing a little bit up there, but it's kind of hard. To get do up you think there. DJing is becoming kind of a lost art? True DJs, like, true, real DJs, like, vinyl, vinyl DJ, and DJs. the scratching and the yeah. stuff. I've, I've never been a scratch DJ, and my my blendings for shit nowadays. But uh, I definitely came up in it. Um, I think song selectings, you know, is one of your key things, knowing your crowd, being able to read the crowd. I've never personally played with Serato or any of those programs. Uh, I don't know what it's like not to be limited. I couldn't imagine having that much music in front of you, like how you're going to select the next song. I guess they kind of have the program kind of finds you ones that are near the beats, but uh, I like kind of being limited to my three cases or whatever I brought for the evening. I and think it forces to- you to be more creative, mm-hmm. like, you know, really think about what you're doing. For sure. And yeah, I mean, it's fun. I mean, nothing worse than playing to no one, but Salt Lake's tough. It's really hard to get people to, to dance unless you're at the clubs. Um, I mean, I've, I've played pretty much everywhere. I played it, like I said, Burt's for quite a while, played at the Jack Love for quite a while, but I've like opened up for bands. I've done a lot. I've played the Zephyr. I've played like snowboard parties, you know, at, at uh, what was it in Portocol? Yeah. You name it. I've kind of done a birthday party there. I even played Cheers once or not Cheers at Murphy's. You mentioned it's hard to get people to dance. I think so. Like legitimate dance, dance, not like, okay. So you think it's easier in other States? I wonder. It's easier in Ogden. Really? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Well, I wonder why. Any, any reason why you think? Uh, Yeah. I probably shoot myself in the foot here, but I got two of them. Uh, (laughs) I think people are just a little image concerned. Okay. I think it's about, about last call when people start to move a little bit. Okay. Or maybe I just suck at DJing, but I think, you you know, like it's kind of. Okay. Hard to let your okay. defenses down. Or I got you. Just well, I mean, we're definitely, you know, our, our general society is very keeping up with the Joneses based. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think that can rub off even onto the counterculture, you know, like we can still kind of, that's still our, our culture here. Mm-hmm. And so it is hard to just kind of let loose and be yourself. Well, we got to look good. Man. Well, you know, yeah. I work hard I mean, on my beard. I got to make sure it stays looking good, you know. <laughs> just it, practice dancing at home. <laughs> there you go. So, okay. So you're, when you're not doing the tattoo convention, these books, tarot cards, DJing, what, are, what else? I mean, what are some of your other hobbies and interests? Uh, or does that keep, I'll keep you pretty busy. That keeps me pretty busy. Uh, my, uh, trying to become a SoundCloud rapper. <laughs> yeah. that's kind of where it's at though isn't that how Be close next, alone yeah, yeah. Like, cash valley thousandaires check us out we still nice. have a myspace page um uh, no yeah um wait is that for real no, no he's playing dang it i was totally gonna look that up <laughs> okay i'm very gullible well, she, so. she's blonde too so. <laughs> <laughs> i've never heard that before that's original <laughs> well the tattoo convention i mean that must be like almost a full-time job really right i mean that's year there's round. definitely some I mean, time you're, off you're you're, you're you're busy with that. Yeah. I mean, after, after the dust settles about a month or so after I, I decompress and take a little bit too much time off. I'm trying to figure out what it is I want to do. I I tried to get back into the restaurant industry for a minute and just wasn't, wasn't jiving. Um, I'd like to maybe wait tables one night a week just to, just to do it and see if I could give good service. But, um, I don't know. I don't know where. Have you ever waited tables? I have. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you enjoy that. I've done everything in the restaurant industry. Yeah. Yeah. You said you came out and cooked. Were you a chef too? No, I learned, I learned how to cook backwards at a really interesting, uh, restaurant in Richmond, Virginia. 
Right on. So, what do you mean, cook backwards? Like, like legitimately backwards? Yeah, <laughs> I got, I'm I got I'm thrown, thrown uh, into the fire and just like basically was working a saute position with no background at the place that I worked at. I basically walked people to and from their car because I was in a sketchy neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then we were short someone one night and they just put me on the line and it was crazy high volume restaurant. I got out here, couldn't cut an onion, you know, everything. My mise en place was basically there. And I'm like, yo, I'm so-and-so. I worked here and there and, you know, pre-checking my resume or what those restaurants are online. And I went to Market Street. That was the first place that hired me because I knew I could thrive in volume because the volume that we were in in this crazy restaurant, Mama Zoo's, I uh, realized I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Let's uh, let's switch gears to Salt Lake City. Okay. You're familiar with these questions, CJ, a little bit here. Uh, I mean, let's say family and friends coming out from Richmond, Virginia, right, to visit you. Yeah. What's the CJ tour? Like, where do you take them, man? Like, do you take them downtown? Do you take them to the mountains? What's, we got enough time. I like, to, you know, obviously take them to Wendover. Now, <laughs> salt flats sure. are cool. Yeah. Uh, it's a great drive out there, uh, up into one of the canyons. Uh, Brighton's always been my favorite, but Snowbird's beautiful, depending on the time of year. You definitely go up there. You know, maybe take Gardens Pass over to Park City, show them Park City. Gilgal Gardens. Gotta uh, like, go there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotta get freaky. Gotta see MC Brick Pants. MC Brick. Oh, that, is, that the, <laughs> is that the old dude over yeah, there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Are, are you a skier or snowboarder? You mentioned you mentioned going up to the, the canyons and stuff. I skied back home mostly. And okay. then I got a uh, snowboard towards the end of when I was living in, in Virginia. And basically, uh, you're on ice out there. Okay. And uh, realized it's kind of why I came out here. I was like, that shit sounds pretty fun and powder. I grew up surfing and skateboarding. Okay. So I skied quite a bit back home as much as I could. I worked at like a book and ski tours in Richmond, uh, after college. So I'd be like kind of the chaperone on the bus tours. They were like anywhere from two to six hour, eight hour trips. So I'd kind of run the bus and got on the ski, got to ski a lot, but learned edge control out there. And then, uh, when I came out here for quite a while, held a pass up at Brighton. Haven't been going much lately. Any other, any other tips or advice for people to, to survive winters in Utah? If you're not a skier or snowboarder, like what are some other things you do here in the winter? Huh? It's a new question. Yeah, I'm, just throwing, question. I'm just throwing, just, yeah. just coming up at me. Man. Uh, I don't know. I'm about ready to pick up snowshoeing. I'm really? That, okay, that. that's why I was curious. You know, any yeah. other kind of winter activity? Snowshoeing. Yeah, I haven't tried that, but I think that's uh, my favorite thing that I always liked was the first uh, first run. Okay, and like actually just strapping into my board and kind of taking a minute and laughing at all the suckers that are down in the valley and just getting that fresh air and just taking a little look around before you before you drop in. I mean, snowboarding out here is great. Everything but the ocean, like camping. I, if you came out in the winter, definitely go camping. It's so great to see this many stars. What about favorite local eating spots? Yeah, I like to eat a lot. A um, couple spots lately was uh, tearing up mom's kitchen quite a bit on uh, State Street, little Taiwanese place, kind of interesting menu. Kind of got bored of that. What is it? Don Daniels, the taco spot out there in Rose Park on 10th North. Been eating there a lot lately. Red Iguana and Takashi are two of my favorites around the world, hands down. Just finally went and ate at Kyoto the other night and had a damn good time there. I don't know why I avoided that spot, but I was really impressed. Peggy, that used to have Ichiban's back there, rolling rolling sushi there. So stoked on that. Very mm -hmm. cool. And what about, uh, would you change anything about Salt Lake City if you could? Hmm. Like if you had the opportunity, let's say you became mayor, right? Of Salt Lake City, right? You're like, king of Salt Lake City. King, yeah. king CJ. Hmm. I don't know what the solution to the homeless problem is. I mean, yeah. I just, I mean, I think it's. My, my first thought is give them all a home, but some of them can't even live it. I mean, they, they, they do better living on the street. I've heard stories, yeah. you know, you give them a home and they, they can't even. We, we kind of need like a, a more full featured solution, uh, not just like, okay, go here now, go here now. We need like. I yeah, don't know. I don't know what the I, solution if, is Yeah, either, if I could but, wave a wand, but yeah. I mean, I can't figure that out. It's it's mm -hmm. it's awful. You know, it's such a beautiful, clean city, and uh, there's just there's well, just a lot I mean, of them. It's, it's I mean, everywhere. It's it, you know, it's going everywhere. I think the opioid crisis has definitely done a lot. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of mental health issues. There's, a, I mean, there's a huge, huge thing with the opiates. Poor kids, you know, play football, break their arm. Doctor ever prescribes them, and now they like doing clear or brown, and you know. Mm -hmm. They go to jail and they can't wait to go back into jail. But when they go out, they're going to get high. And, yeah. And they just don't know what to do. I don't think there's a lot of jobs for people. I think our computers are putting everyone out of work. There's it's a little, it's getting scary. Well, they can all put on a convention, right? Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> 
anyway, let's. Uh, I mean, I've I've enjoyed having you on the conver- or on the podcast today, CJ. Um, as we kind of wrap this episode up a little bit, I mean, is there anything that you want? We're hoping we would bring up that we didn't bring up. Uh, no, no. You know, I think we 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 got the convention. We got your tarot cards. We yeah. got your books. Have you thought about like more books or anything? Have you thought about doing anything more like? Uh, those type of things? Giving it a little bit of thought, but no. no just nothing. Just kind of staying busy with Maybe the Maybe some memoirs one day. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Mention, uh, how can people connect with you or the, the Salt Lake Tattoo Convention website, social media? Feel free to give all those a plug. Yeah, uh, the, the website's slctattoo.com and uh, the Instagram, I believe, is slc underscore tattoo convention. And use your Googler. You can find us. Uh, come on down. Bring your parents. It's a family affair. Bring your kids. We have a bouncy house and we have activities for the children. So that's really cool. Do you, okay. Do you have temporary tattoos that the kids can yeah. get? Yeah, oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. See, now that's I'm cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Let's that. Let's give Lucy that. a sleeve. Yeah. I think that's going. a, that's a big thing. Like mm-hmm. it's really cool. You, you got to remember who you, you know, when you're reviewing the photos, you got to remember who your bread and butter is and sure. to see all those baby carriages and people with their kids and to watch friends, kids grow up that were getting temporary tattoos that are now getting tattoos. I think it's great. So I think it's great to, you're going to pay to park. You're going to pay to get in. You're going to pay to get tattooed. Do you want to pay for a babysitter too? Like, yeah, dude, the babysitting gets expensive. I mean, we were kind of talking about that before we Mm -hmm. even started recording the show. Like just, gosh, just, I mean, most babysitters want 20 bucks an hour now. Right. And I'm just like, Imagine. Damn. I Get programmed I, for less than that per like, hour. Shut, <laughs> like, come on. shut up. I mean, it, I mean, I remember as a kid being two bucks an hour. And right. like, no wonder parents can go on a date. But uh, the dates again are the t- 20th. February 21st through 23rd. Tw- February 21st, 20, mm-hmm. 23rd. I mean, I would imagine even if you're out of state, we got a lot of out of state listeners. I mean, come on, yeah, you know, grab yeah, a hotel yeah. downtown and, yeah, and the, make uh, a weekend. The Radisons are our homies, and they offer a nice rate. Uh, a lot of people, you know, Airbnb it up, but uh, the website's on the on the updates coming up here real soon, so it'll have a current. The uh, artist list will be updated as people confirm, but. Uh, there's a link to the hotel page and yeah, a lot, a lot of out of towners come in, come check it out. It's pretty, it's, I mean, the one kind of takeaway from what we do there is say there's 400 artists or so, and think maybe three people, three tattoos a day. What other kind of event can you do where you permanently modify people's bodies? Yeah. <laughs> like they'll never oh, forget yeah. that day. No, you know? yeah. Like I got that tattoo at that year's convention. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty crazy. That's pretty cool. And you don't you don't imagine it ending anytime soon, right? The convention. You just, I hope not. I yeah, think we'd yeah. riot if you stopped. It'd <laughs> yeah. be like, hey, I'm sure someone would. Where's our convention? Run with it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's well received, and uh, like we're very thankful to Salt Lake for being so supportive every year. It's amazing. We've kind of had the same supporters in our program. Same, you know, Red Iguana and Coffee Garden. No questions asked. Going to buy an ad in that program and. Everyone's down, you know, they're waiting for the billboards to go up and we went, we switched into March for a while and everyone just waiting for that. It's kind of the first thing to do in February. Yeah. Very cool. Throw your final question out, Chrissy. All right. My final question is drum roll. Okay. Uh, if you could leave our listeners with a motto or piece of life advice that you live by, what would it be? Say what you mean and say it mean. All right. Many thanks again to CJ Starkey for joining us on this episode. All of the links that we mentioned in this conversation can be found directly on this episode's show notes right on our website. You can find this really easy. I am saltlake.com slash 411. That's for episode 411. Support for I am Salt Lake comes from KRCL 90.9, amplifying community voices since 1979. This listener supported music discovery station covers everything from reggae and punk rock to local grassroots activism. Listen today at 90.9 FM or online at krcl.org. And we have some reviews to read. We got a new review in uh, Apple Podcast or iTunes. And then we also have two reviews that we just got in Facebook. And so we're going to read those really quick. I'm really excited for this, you guys, because it's been a while since we've gotten any reviews to read. Uh, I want to go first, though, Chris. Okay. Okay, fine. You go first. All right. Let me read this review on uh, Apple Podcast. It's from 801 email 104. They say, love this podcast, inspiring and full of positivity. We are Salt Lake. So thank you very much for that review. Uh, A couple over there on Facebook, if you want to read those, Chris. Yeah, we got a couple of new ones on Facebook. One from Joel Sharpton. He's an awesome friend of ours. His uh, review says, great content, uplifting, inspiring, and informative, whether you're a native or transplant or just traveling through. 
And isn't he's from like over there in like Louisiana or something? Yeah, he's out east somewhere. Yeah. So yeah. thank you, Joel, for that. Indeed. There was another one, right? There's another one from Jennifer Mitchell. She says, I've been following the I Am Salt Lake podcast and posts since it got started. Great stories that represent our local culture, businesses, and people. Give it a listen. Very cool. Thank you, Jennifer. Very cool. Thanks, Jennifer and Joel. And then the uh, email or whoever that was on Apple Podcasts. email. You're awesome. Yeah. And if you leave us a review, take a screenshot of it, email it over to us, to myself or to Chrissy. Let us know where you left the review as well as your mailing address. We'll send you uh, an I Am Salt Lake sticker yeah. just for doing that. It seems like a win-win, right? Totally. And that's going to do it for this episode. Don't forget to show your support for this podcast by supporting our show sponsors, KRCL, The Salt Lake Barber Company, and Libsyn. We'll have links for all of them at our website under the notes for this episode, which you can find at IamSaltLake.com. And if you're looking for some other ways to support the show, I mean, obviously, first and foremost, go support our sponsors, but you can also become a supporter of the podcast really easy by becoming a Patreon supporter. We have a Patreon. It's really easy. Go to IamSaltLake.com slash Patreon. It's kind of like an ongoing Kickstarter if you're unfamiliar with it. Basically, you pledge to donate like a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars every month. And uh, it keeps the lights on here. It gives us new microphones, helps our hosting, web hosting, whatnot. Really easy to do. I am saltlake.com slash Patreon. Or if you would rather just make a little one-time donation or a big one-time donation, <laughs> you could do that at I am saltlake.com slash PayPal, and that will forward you to PayPal. Or leave us a review in Apple Podcasts or Facebook like the cool people did a few minutes ago. Indeed. And our episodes make great water cooler talk. Let me tell you. Are you talking about this podcast at work, Chrissy? <laughs> a little, Maybe. Maybe a little bit. Hey, you guys have a great week. Make sure to get out and enjoy the city. Support local whenever possible. And we'll see you on the next episode. And good night, Grammy. Good night, Grammy.